Black History Month. We're taking a look at one tool African Americans used during the Jim Crow era. Green books served as a lifeline for black travelers looking to get from point A to point B alive. NBC 29's Dominga Murray shows us Charlottesville tied to this history. They had uh, experience traveling during you know, Jim Crow era. This is Philip Cobb's family vacation photo, heading from his home in Albemarle County to see the Tuskegee Institute. My brother, myself, and my father. During one of the most racist times in American history. I remember going into service stations and being refused service, having the attendants walk out see that we were black and wave us off and say, we're not serving you. Even though he was just a child, that pain is still with him. So that was the first time I had really experienced that level of rejection uh, and it did not feel good. Victor Hugo Green created the Negro Travelers Green Book in 1936, a guide for African Americans to travel safely during the Jim Crow era. It was a time where sundown towns stretched across the country, segregation was legal, and violent mobs attacking black travelers was the norm. Miranda Burnett is a historical collection librarian researching it all. One of the Green Book locations was the Chauffeur's Rest hotel or a re kind of a resident inn and that was located on Old Preston and currently is under the Omni parking lot. But that location, it was owned by the Commodore family. Some Green Book locations like the Chauffeur's Rest are demolished, but one relic still around is Alexander's home here on Dice Street. Now, I used this Green Book to find the address, and I double-checked to make sure I was correct using a phone directory from 1931 located at the Historical Society. The Green Books mentioned places for lodging, but they also listed things like hair salons, barbershops, and even the Paramount Theater. Maybe one of the lesser-known ones that was actually demolished is a house known as Carver Inn and the first um, black graduate of UVA, um, he actually stayed in the Carver Inn instead of staying on grounds. Olivia Petty is a UVA third year student and research assistant preserving and digitizing green books for the university. Yeah. Catherine Ziff is a historian who Great shares that goal. Of, you know, what happens when you have to stay on the road for, you know, 600 miles? And that means not just even just getting out of the car to sleep, but you're eating in the car, you're using the bathroom in the car. Um, you know, it's 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 a terrible situation. Zip says getting out of your vehicle away from home as a black person in this time could be a matter of life and death. So, if, you know, just simple things like finding gas was difficult. Historian Susan Hellman has been plotting and digitizing the Green Book since 2016 so they can exist online. To me, it's really exciting to commemorate besides both just these buildings that still exist. Also, just these are regular, normal people it's not Martin Luther King Jr. or Harriet Tubman, but it's normal people who are doing actually something pretty heroic for that day and time. 93rd District's Delegate Mike Mullen is championing a bill to put honorary markers at each Green Book location in the Commonwealth. It's funded. It's ready to go. The governor is behind it as well. Um, so we're hopeful uh, that, the, that the bill will pass through the full Senate and then move forward that way. I am fascinated with the the green book itself i so understand why it was needed for travel i mean my limited experiences of traveling doing that heavily segregated time gave me an insight into the need for it in charlottesville Dominga murray nbc 29 news